As Robert Mueller's testimony captured Washington's attention Wednesday, some 2020 Democratic presidential hopefuls were in Detroit at the 110th annual NAACP convention. This comes less than a week before the second round of primary debates is set to kick off in the same city. CBSN political reporter Caitlin Huey Burns joins us now from Detroit. Uh, Caitlin, thanks for being with us. The presidential candidates addressed the issue of impeachment at the convention Wednesday. Tell us about some of those responses. Right. Well, the Democrats that were here were trying to sh say that they can do two things at once. They can uh, make this case against the president. They can move forward or advocate for moving forward with impeachment proceedings while also talking about issues that they believe that voters care about. I think Elizabeth Warren uh, really showed that example of trying to do two things at once. She told us, look, I read the Mueller report the day it came out. I read it entirely. I've said from the beginning beginning of that report released that we should move forward with impeachment proceedings. At the same time, look at all of these policies I have addressing everything from a racial inequality to housing to education and health care. So the candidates today were asked a lot about Mueller because it was the topic of the day, but they also know that voters are not really talking about it. We see that reflected in our polling. We also see that reflected on conversations we've been having on the ground here in Detroit. Detroit and in other, ba other battleground states and places that they care about this issue, but it's not top of mind. Hmm. Um, Caitlin, I also want to ask you about the latest candidate feud. Former Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Cory Booker are escalating their attacks on each other over the issue of criminal justice. You asked Senator Booker about Joe Biden's support of the 1994 crime bill. Let's listen to that. I'm disappointed that it's taken Joe Biden years and years until he was running for president to actually say that he made a mistake, that there were things in that bill that were extraordinarily bad. Uh, I, I've been uh, living and working now in Newark, New Jersey for 20 years, and we've seen the devastating impact of legislation like that, that has destroyed communities, that has turned, uh, 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 put mass incarceration on steroids. And so I'm disappointed it's taken him so long to own up uh, to that. And now he's unrolled his, um, unveiled his, his crime bill for a guy who helped to be an architect of mass incarceration. This is an inadequate uh, solution to what is a raging crisis in our country. So, Caitlin, you also got the chance to ask Joe Biden about Senator Booker's comments, and I want to play some of his response. Senator Booker uh, called you the architect of mass incarceration. Corey knows that's not true, number one. Number two, you know, the significant part of the incarceration that occurred before the crime bill was written, number one. Number two, if you uh, look at uh, the mayor's record in Newark, um, one of the provisions I wrote in the crime bill, a pattern and practice of misbehavior, his police department was stopping and frisking people, mostly African-American men. We took action against them. The Justice Department took action against them, held the police department accountable. He objected to um, fe fe uh, federal interference. Uh, if he wants to go back and talk about records, I'm happy to do that. But I'd rather talk about the future. This is not the first time, Caitlin, that Joe Biden has had to defend himself over his support of the 1994 crime bill. And it comes just as Joe Biden unveiled his own criminal justice reform bill. How much of an issue do you think this will be for Joe Biden moving forward? I think it is going to be a really big issue because his opponents are going to go after him on it. A lot of critics of that 1994 crime bill that Joe Biden helped get through the Senate say that it led to mass incarceration that disproportionately affected people of color here in the United States and that the country is still uh, reeling from that. And so the reason I asked Cory Booker about Biden's new policy is because when it was introduced, Cory Booker came out with a pretty scathing statement. Today, he escalated that attack in what is a preview, we believe, of what is to come uh, on this debate stage, which is actually going to be right here behind me next week. So look for those, uh, those comments to be elevated again in that debate. What was interesting, though, was that Joe Biden came back with a response to Cory Booker, and he was prepared.
prepared for that. The campaign then came after, came out with a statement uh, elaborating on what Joe Biden told us, going after Cory Booker on his record in Newark. So the vice president, the former vice president, today said that, look, he uh, is going to defend his record on this and be prepared to uh, go after some of his opponents if need be. He's also said that he was caught off guard by Kamala Harris going after his record on busing in the last debate. So the campaign is showing today that they are prepared for criticisms and they're ready to give them a bat right back at the, their rivals. Well, 10 Democratic presidential candidates took the stage in Michigan Wednesday. What can you tell us, Caitlin, about the importance of that state and specifically the Detroit area in the presidential race? Exactly. Michigan is often a battleground state, but Donald Trump won it narrowly in 2016. And it's a place where Democrats are trying to figure out how to win back areas that flipped for Donald Trump. And I think Michigan is a really good test case for that, particularly here in Detroit, because the party is really kind of having this debate of, do we try to win back white working class voters who chose Donald Trump in 2016? Or do we ramp up the base, especially uh, among African African-American voters in places like Detroit. So I think today and next week we'll see a little bit about how these candidates are assessing that. Now we've talked to a lot of candidates today about that and they, they argue that they can do uh, two things at once, that they can also turn out the base and convince Trump supporters to turn back around to them by talking about the president's record on the economy. They do acknowledge that that's still a very difficult task. So look for these candidates here in Michigan next week back here on the debate stage uh, to talk about what their path to victory would be in a state like Michigan. All right, Caitlin Huey Burns reporting from Detroit for us. Caitlin, thank you. Thank you.